So it's no secret that in order to lose body fat, we need to create and sustain a calorie deficit. And while we'll know that, it's much easier said than done. And that's why in this video, I want to share with you three simple habits that I personally use that make being in that calorie deficit much easier easier. And I've been now between 10 and 15% body fat for more than a decade. I've helped hundreds of other people get there as well. And I would highly recommend that you add these habits to your routine. Now, starting with the first habit, which is also one of my personal favorites, and that is calorie banking. In a nutshell, when you have a day coming up or an event where you know you're going to need a little bit more calories, such as a dinner date or something special, you can borrow up to 10% of your calories from two to three days beforehand and store those into your quote unquote calorie savings account and then use those calories later on those special days. And because your weekly total calorie intake is going to be the same, you're going to get the same amount of fat loss. So you're not sacrificing your results at all, but you're gaining a lot more flexibility with your your diet. Maybe you need those extra calories on a Friday or a Saturday night, while you don't really mind to eat a little bit less on a Wednesday or a Thursday when you're really busy with work. I found this to be really helpful in preventing those situations when you're really good on weekdays, but then the weekend comes out and just wipes out all the progress. By banking some calories ahead of time, you'll be able to enjoy more food on the weekends or those special events while still maintaining that calorie deficit and losing body fat. Now, the second habit that works really well in synergy with the first one is learning how to negotiate with yourself. And what I mean by this is that when you're in a calorie deficit for an extended period of time, eventually your mind can become your worst enemy. All those old eating habits are just waiting for the right opportunity to strike back. That voice that knows you really well is waiting for that moment to give you the perfect rationalization to get you off track. And if you give into that voice, things can quickly go sideways. One bad meal turns into a bad day, which can spiral out of control and become a bad week. And we all have that part of ourselves that's more rebellious, that doesn't want to be in that calorie deficit, doesn't like the rules, the structure, wants the instant gratification and wants to indulge right now. But then we also have that part of ourselves that's more disciplined, that understands the consequences of actions, that's thinking long-term, that wants to achieve this goal. And the key here is to open up a negotiation channel between those two sides of yourself. It's not about one side convincing the other that it's right. It's about finding a fair and reasonable amount of indulgence and restriction. What is a fair amount of pizza to have? To enjoy the pizza, to appreciate the food, but at the same time, honor your fitness goals. What is a fair amount of ice cream to have on a regular basis? What's a fair amount of alcohol to have? How much can you have while still adhering to the goals? Maybe the former restriction that works best for you is taking a more slower approach with fat loss, losing no more than a pound a week, but then retaining a bit more flexibility with the diet. And you have to be able to accept that. Because what I see a lot of people do is they fall into this mindset where it's all the pizzas, cookies, ice creams, door dashing the outer all the time, or it's zero of that. And then it's just chicken and broccoli. That is not sustainable and it's also not reasonable. You need to negotiate with yourself to set up that fair amount of restriction and indulgence that allows you to maintain that calorie deficit until you hit your goal. And most of these food trade-offs that you make during that calorie deficit are also temporary. People tend to forget this, but you're not supposed to be in a calorie deficit forever. Once you finish your fat loss phase and you reach your goal weight, you're gonna increase your calories to maintenance. And those extra calories can be invested back into more food variety. Of course, you don't wanna go back to your old eating habits that had you gain the body fat to begin with, still wanna have a good structure, focus on whole healthy and processed foods, maintaining good protein intake, pay attention to your calories, but you will have more calories at your disposal, which will allow for more flexibility and will be truly sustainable long-term. Now, the third habit that helps me stay in a calorie deficit it is viewing myself as a calorie investor and paying attention to the return and investment of each meal. And here's what I mean by this. Let's take Joe, for example. Joe does some math and he sets his calories to 2000 per day, which is a 500 calorie deficit to lose one pound or half a kilo per week. Joe is eating his meals and then tracking those meals to make sure that he's hitting his calories and macros. One day, Joe wakes up and he decides to have pancakes for breakfast. He ends up spending about a thousand calories in those pancakes while getting about 30 grams of protein. 
Now it's early afternoon and Joe has about a thousand calories left and he also has to hit 130 grams of protein to reach his daily target. Now Joe is getting pretty hungry because those pancakes weren't as filling so he decides to have another meal which is 500 calories and now he gets an extra 50 grams of protein. Now it's already dinner time and Joe gets a surprise text from a loved one. They're preparing a special dinner for him that he shouldn't eat anything else. Now Joe is in a pretty tough spot. He's already very hungry. He has to hit 80 grams of protein. He doesn't want to disappoint his loved ones, but he also has only 500 calories left. So Joe, like many others in the same situation, ends up overeating and since he already went over, he decides he's going to indulge a little bit more, ends up having more dessert and goes all the way up to 3000 calories for that day, which is a thousand more than he originally planned. And the problem here is in the dinner. Joe made a really bad investment by spending half of his daily calories on meal one while getting very little protein, very little fiber and very little satiety with those pancakes. And that made the rest of the day very difficult. And this is an example where a smart person with good intentions can fail if one of their decisions puts them in a really bad situation. So when you're deciding what you're going to eat, you want to think of this like an investor. What is the return on investment you're getting? How much protein are you getting per calorie? How much satiety are you getting? How is this meal setting up the rest of the day for success? You also want to leverage tools like the satiety index to help you prioritize foods that make you fuller. The key is to be selective and smart with your calorie investments. And you always want to be thinking, which foods make it easier for me to maintain a calorie deficit and which foods make it harder? This is a very simple heuristic that will help you make smarter decisions. If you realize that every time you have a certain food or a certain drink, they end up falling off track, you need to address that, whether it's replace it, moderate, or remove it entirely. There are certain things on the journey that will be negative return on investment for you. And you need to know what those things are, what is that adding friction, what are those situations, those trigger foods, those environments that you need to handle. And once you do that, once you remove the friction, staying in a calorie deficit is much easier. Another thing that's gonna make it much easier is making sure you hit that subscribe button below. Details for coaching if you want to work with me on your journey are in the description below. So leave another help video here for you at the end. So check out the video and I'm going to see you right there.